move this uh, 24th answer from the next page to this page. Nothing has changed. Right. Let's uh, let's go. 25th. <clears throat> Uniform block A of mass 25 kg and length 6 uh, meters. So length 6 meters, mass, okay, uniform, thanks, uh, is hinged at C and is supported uh, by a small block B as shown in the figure. What? Okay, this thing. A constant uh, force, so it's, a, it's hinged at C and now it's supported by B. Okay, okay, okay. A constant force F of magnitude 400 Newton is applied to block B horizontally. Right. What is the speed of B after it moves 1.5 meters? Uh, mass of block B is this thing and the coefficient of friction for all uh, contact surfaces is 0.3. So, oh, so the normal force changes. That's all that's happening, huh? Right. So, constant force F is uh, F of magnitude something uh, applied to block B horizontally, right? What is the speed of E after it moves uh, to okay, after it moves 1.5 meters? So you can just do, I think, uh, work energy theorem. So yeah, F dot dx, uh, F is constant, perfect. And then friction is uh, not constant, it changes with x, but it's integratable. So we can integrate that. And then that would be equal to, yeah, so it's doable. The mass of the block B is 2.5 kg. And the equation of friction for all contact surfaces is 0.3. All? How many are there? Oh, so it's also on uh, on a... Oh, yeah. It's also on the ground, huh? So it's a small block B. It should have some mass, right? This is 25 kg. This, uh, this guy B is... What? Mass of B is given. Fine. And the question of friction for all contact surfaces is 0. Wait, uh, so do we take these? I think we should. We should also take the ground and uh, B, that surface too also. Be, so we should also take friction over there. Fine. Then let's do it. So first of all, we have to figure out normal force. Now, normal forces, in fact. Yes. So... Okay, if this is, uh, say, x distance away from here, and you got this uh, b over here, okay. This is normal force put on this guy. Uh, yeah. Now, the torque equations about this point for this capital M guy. So, uh, this will be small and this will be capital M. Uh, so, the gravitation is acting here, right? What's this? 3m, 3m? I don't know what that is. Oh, so meters. Sorry. Not, <laughs> yeah. So you got zero point acting in this direction. Uh, it's going to be at L upon two, right? So let's we'll, we'll say this whole thing is like L. Yes. So there we go. You got G, uh, mg, and then L upon two. That's this torque. Uh, this should be equal to normal times x. Yes. So the normal force is just mg L upon two, and that times one upon x. Okay, understandable. That's this normal force. Uh, so normal force one. But the thing is, there's also this normal force. So, uh, and 1, and, and 2 is going to be uh, this normal force, mgl upon 2 times 1 upon x, uh, plus the weight of this guy. So, it's going to be mg, uh, yes. And the question of friction is that, yes. So, the friction force on this guy, because it's moving uh, relative to both of the surfaces in the same direction, right? So, that means both friction forces act in the same, uh, they are helping each other. So, it's just going to be mu times normal 1 plus normal 2, right? That is the friction force. So, frictional force is just mu times of, yeah, mg L times 1 upon x, yes, and then plus small m times g. Understandable. Now, we want to integrate this from x equal to whatever initially it was to something else, right? Uh, that will be like, okay, mu mg L, and then you got natural log of x upon x naught. Uh huh. Plus mg delta x, right? This thing is the oh, it's like the work done by friction. Oh, it's gonna be negative as well. All of this is gonna be ne negative. Yes, right. Uh, they are saying okay that force is constant. Fine, fine, fine. What is the speed of b after it moves over? So uh, what should happen is that this f thing times delta x at minus this guy and then minus that guy. 
right that's the work turn total total work turn on this guy which is a change in its kinetic energy so initially it's a zero so finally it's going to be half mp squared and we do want the speed right speed of v after it moves 1.5 meter exactly so delta x is given uh initial x it's uh at l upon 2 i think which okay let's just go with the general case and we'll see what we get uh i mean yeah at this point you already have the thing so why not go ahead and you know just do it oh come on delete right so you just want a speed of course uh just divide like two and then upon m so it's gonna be what 2f delta x upon m minus 2 mu uh there's no two actually over here like cancel out so you can just take a two out in fact i mean this equation by itself is good enough so uh what do i do uh just do just do this thing so square root of let's see square root of two times first you got so delta x times all that stuff it's going to be delta x times f upon small m minus a uh, g yes right delete that first right and then uh two times that stuff and then that upon m so this is going to be minus mu capital m upon small m times gl uh, and then you got natural log of x upon x naught all of this is inside the square root by the way yes this is our uh, v value Right, so I just say that's the answer. It is 25th. Right, now let's calculate this thing. Well, that's like x1 upon x minus meter. Right, so uh, what's delta x? Delta x is 1.5 meter, x initially was just L upon 2, right? So this whole thing is, and what is L initial? Uh, what is L upon 2? So uh, three meters, and that's just one point five meters. So this is going to be four point five upon three, yes, which is like one point five three upon two. So it's going to be natural log of three upon two right, right there, and that's uh, approximately zero point four one. You are saying, okay, nice. So got square root of two, then delta x is just uh, where you go one point five. Yeah, we'll do that later on. So one point five. Then you got capital F upon small m. So 400 Newton upon uh, 2.5 kg. <clears throat> that's weird. Uh, that's going to be what? So 4000 upon 25. That's like 160. Yes. 160 uh, meter per second square. So that minus g. And g uh, is 10. So it's 150 right there. Okay. Nice. Oh, so it's like squared. Fine, fine, fine. And then minus mu. Mu is just... Where is that? Right, 0 0.3. It's going to be 0 0.3 times. So capital M upon small m is just um, 10. Yes, because 25 kg and you got 2.5 kg. So it's be 10 over here. Okay. That times g. So once again, just 10. And that times l. L is just 6. And then all of this stuff. So uh, that's 0 0.41. Right, this is what we are looking for. So, square root of 2 times of, let's see, it's just going to be 15 squared minus um, 10, 10, that just dissolves this thing, so like 3, and that times 6, and that times 0. 0.41, right? That's 2.5, that's 25. Yeah, just difference of 10. So, that's 10, right? This is going to be 4, 0. 0.41. Okay, understandable. Uh, and L is 6 and yeah, all of it just works out. So it's going to be 3 times 6 times point, uh, sorry, 4.1, which is, that's not a good value. No, this is not a good value. What do I do with it? Uh, so uh, what if I bring that 2 inside? And that's going to be like, okay, 225, 2 times of that. Wait, what am I doing? Well, it's gonna be 30 times 15, it's like 450, of course. Uh, will it work? I don't know. 
So it's got 18 times 8.1, I guess. Uh, which will be so you got 8 1 carried on, and got 8 3 4 is 1 4 4. So 1 4 and like 1 4 5. Yes. Yes, 1 4 5.8. Huh. So this is unnaturally a big number. Because I thought it would be very small or something so that we can neglect it, but cannot do that. Right. Just have to do it like this. So square root of. Let's see, 0.2, and then you got 9 minus 5, just so 4, and then you got 9, what's this, 4? Oh, it's, it's gone, 0. 304.2. Uh, what? What is this? Ah, uh, this is not making sense. 304. I don't know what this is. Like, this is definitely not a square number in any way. Come on. Skirt team? Nah, it's just not good. Uh, okay, it's like one point something. Seventeen squared is two hundred eighty nine. It's close enough to that. Yes. Um, and then the next would be eighteen, so it's three twenty four. So it's between seventeen and eighteen. But now, how do we have to actually calculate this? Ah, uh, this is really painful. You know. Right, what is this? Let's see how we can use this. <sighs> nope, just have to put that as the answer. So, square root of 304.2. Calculate this, maybe. I'm guessing it's somewhere near, like it's 70 point something, right? It has to be. So, I'm gonna start off at, yeah, take this apart. I'll start off at 1, 1, 1, minus 1, what, like 2, and then 0, 4, down, 3, 1, or 2, something. So, uh, since you just want 7, like put 7 right there, 7 right there. So, be 9, 4 carried on is 14. It's 27, sorry. Yes. 14 and equal 14 is like 189. Yeah. Then 5 and that's not 1. And then 2, 0. So uh, 3, 4, something. I don't know what next is going to be. So, huh. We'll have to figure that out. So 3, 4, something. 5 uh, might work. No, it won't. Uh, 4. So point four. It's gonna be six one carried on got sixteen seven. Okay, one carried on twelve three uh, four and then you got uh, four once again one four four uh, two zeros. So three four eight and something three four eight and something. What is gonna be uh, four? I guess it's five. I think like that. But I put four right there. Let's see. Six one carried on. Then thirty two is like three three carried on. Got sixteen and three is just nine one carried on. Well, got one three something, right? Three four nine six six and then got uh seven four one seven. That's zero. Oh, nice. So look at this thing. Okay, if I, if I do that, it's gonna be three four nine. Sorry, three four eight eight and then something, right? So something eight eight uh four three yeah whatever it's gonna be one or something and then thing is 17 by 4 4 is a good good approximation that's what it says so there we go 17 point four four right next 26 Okay, a drinking straw, a thin, hollow, cylindrical, long tube of mass 2M is placed on a table orthogonally to the edge. Okay, such that half of it extends beyond the table. The fly with a mass M lands on the inner end A of the straw and walks along the straw until it reaches the outer end B. Okay, it does not tip even when another fly 
lands on the top of the first one. Uh, fine. Find the largest mass that the second fly can have. Neglect friction between straw and table. So wait, it's walking, right? Yeah, that's look, it's walking. It's not just flying up and then sitting over here. No, 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 no. What's happening is that it's walking, so it's shifting this uh, straw back. Right, and that's why another fly can... Okay, okay, I understand what's happening. Oof. Well, right now, is it at equilibrium? It, it must be, right? Uh, well, there's no friction or anything. Uh, the gravity is just acting over here. Oh, yeah. Uh, as seen by this point, there's no torque on this thing. And of course, I mean, yeah, that's just the way it is. Right, and the normal force will also just act at this very cornermost point, so so as to um, cancel up the torque, balance everything. Good. That is doable. Yes. Now, what do we want? Okay, so a, a fly goes over here, and then it uh, walks like that. So initially, it its center of mass is somewhere over here, and then now it's like this, and uh, looks like relative or something. Oh, come on, come on. And uh, this guy, so this whole straw is of 2m. Okay. So initially, so it's got this 2m right here, and then you got a uh, fly. Well, it's very small. It's supposed to be something like that. No, it's just <laughs> whatever. Small m. And then, right, this is the point on ground where it is. And then after some point, it it's like this. So this uh, straw is shifted. It's not. Uh, this 2m over here, we got m over here, and the center of mass must uh, still be at the same point. It's not supposed to be here. Uh, sorry, center of mass is somewhere over here, right? So it's got uh, twice distance from here, one third distance from here, uh, somewhere over here, right? Now, this point must still be, uh, yeah, this should be over here. Uh, understandable. So this distance was, I mean, this whole thing, this is a third of that, right? So L upon 6. Now the center of mass is going to change. So this is also just L upon 6 right here. Yeah, so it's shifted back by L upon 3. Understandable. So it shifted back by L upon 3. And that means uh, this is now back by L upon 3. Okay, fine. I think that's good. The center of mass would have been over here, right? Because a half a distance and everything, so one third of the whole distance. Of course, whole distance is L upon 2, so that's L upon 6, and then it just shifts, it, it be inverses, basically. so it should be like that, right? So now the condition is you got this table. Initially, it was L upon 2, but now it's going to be L upon 2 minus L upon 3, so it's L upon 6 right here, yes. And now this center of mass was initially over here, but now it's going to be like L upon 3 in, inside of it. Right. And now you have two flies of, of 2M, I mean combined mass is going to be 2M, uh, sitting on, on this guy. Yes. Oh, oh, so the second fly has a different mass. Okay. Call that other mass is M dash. So you got like this combined bodies of mass M plus M dash. Right. So there's this m plus m dash times g force on this guy, so the torque must be balanced up. Uh huh. And the normal force, uh, well, it can go, so it's net, I don't know, it's net torque produced, whatever. So normal force can be over here or over here or over here. And then in the end, you know, like for the critical condition, it must be over here, right? So this is going to be like normal force at L upon 2 is equal to m plus m dash uh, times g, right, all of that, and then it's uh, how much away from this guy, l upon 3, so, sorry, ah, it's not l upon 2, it's supposed to be l upon uh, 3 over here, l upon 3 right here, and it should be l upon 2, that makes sense, that makes sense, yes, I mean, you could also do about testing, or, but then this is frictionless, so why take that, so this works, I guess, right, can cancel this out so your normal force oh yeah and it should not topple wait something's just not looking good 
Oh, of course, normal force is also equal to uh, mg plus, uh, sorry, it's, it's 2 mg, right? Because it says mass 2 m, and then it got plus mg plus m dash g, right? That makes sense. Just put that in there. For the critical condition, that should be happening. So, uh, all you have is, so you got like 2 m, and then m plus m dash is 3 m plus m dash. Nothing upon 3 is equal to m plus m dash upon 2. Yes. There we go. So, yeah, that is going to be m upon 2. So, uh, m then minus m upon 2, m upon 2. Equal to m dash upon 2 minus m dash upon 3, which is m dash upon 6. So, m dash is just uh, 3 m. Yeah, it's going to be 3 m. That's the highest mass. Wow, that's unexpectedly big, isn't it? I thought it would be lower than m. But it's 3 m. Huh. Right, that's our critical condition. Now let's just uh, do another way of uh, deriving this so that we make sure it's the thing. So uh, the angular, sorry, uh, the torque equation about this point, how will that be? So you got this two uh, mg over here. Yes. So for this uh, this guy, of course, and then you got uh, this. So m plus m dash times g, and these two are together because normal guy. I mean, yeah forget about that so that's going to be 2 mg times l upon 3 is equal to m plus m dash times uh, g and that times l upon 6 yes so it's going to be uh, 1 upon 2 right there and this cancels of course uh, what does that even mean that just means 4 m is equal to m plus m dash which means m dash is equal to 3 so yes that's also doing the same thing there we go nice 27 A semicircular disk of radius r is released from the from rest uh, from the position shown if no slipping occurs between the disk and the horizontal surface. Determine the expression for angular velocity omega reached by the disk when its kinetic energy is maximum. Oh, yes, released. Okay. And no slipping occurs between the disk and the horizontal surface. Ah, but the point does change. Mm -hmm. Determine the expression for the angular velocity omega reached by the disk when its kinetic energy is maximum. The thing is that uh, because there is no slipping, the friction force cannot do any work. And so it will just fall. We don't know how it's going to fall down, but when it will fall down, it will some, yeah, it will reach uh, this kind of horizontal state somewhere. Uh, its center of mass, okay, we don't know to what center of mass. Uh, Huh. At that point, when it when it does this thing, how is this moving? I mean, we know this is stationary. This point is stationary, right? So it must be like it just got omega. I mean, it's gonna go up after this, right? So it does this thing, and then it does that, and then it goes up or something like that, right? I mean, because there's no work done by uh, by you know uh, the friction, it can possibly just be oscillating. It could be right. Yeah, so what's happening is, right, it, it just costs, it, it just has some angular velocity and then, yeah, what we want is expression for angular velocity reached by the disk when it's, yeah, because the thing is like angular velocity about this point and about this point, same, it's the same thing, yeah, because like, of course, it's just how, how this vector is changing, yes? How this vector making angle theta with uh, this is changing like theta upon dt. This is our angular velocity. I mean, granted the magnitude of that thing, but whatever. So it will be half i omega squared, where i is about the contact point. Yes, uh, when it is in horizontal state. Uh, that should be equal to the mgh, so delta mgh thing. That, oh, yeah. Like this guy's center of mass is somewhere over here, and then, oh god. This guy's center of mass is like this, and then it goes like that. Oof. This is happening. Oh, yeah. Okay, so we actually, and this is like a disk, right? Uniform semicircular disk. So, what we uh, did previously, just gotta do this thing, right? So, it was like ml squared upon, th what was the thing? Integration from 0 to pi upon 2 of sin theta cosine square theta d theta 
upon integration from 0 to pi upon 2 of and then of course that times the radius and everything uh yes and then actually it was like ml squared upon 3 so it's got to be r upon 3 over here oh and two times of that because you actually had two times of the x thing and whatever yeah no wait so something's still really wrong no 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 it's not supposed to be like that sorry, sorry, sorry. oh it's just that right this is how it is oh what something's just not going correctly it's the center of mass we're talking about not the inertia what am i doing what am i doing today it's r times all of this stuff oh come on yeah like remember remember what it was it was like 4 upon 3 pi or something right it should be 4 upon p pi and this was just cosine squared and then d theta this integration was just pi upon 4 and this integration was uh yeah this was one that that's how we got that three factor not because it was like inertia or something no so yeah it's just gonna be 4 pi upon 3 times r so this center of mass also actually bent down by that much so 4 pi sorry 4 upon 3 pi that times r right yeah exactly Yes, 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 yes. So, uh, this is our h value, well, m times g of that. Yes. That is the energy. So, that's the work done by gravity on this guy. And that's just equal to half i omega squared. So, i in this case, about this point, right? So, about this axis like that. About uh, this axis, it would just be um, m r squared upon uh, 2. But about this, it's going to be mr squared upon 2 plus r. Actually, it's not the center of mass in the first place. So, <laughs> oh god. Uh oh. <laughs> no, it's not good. Uh, but hey, we know that this is like stationary and then you got angle velocity like that. So it's going to be like r times of that. Of course, we can do that thing. Right? We can just do center. It's not a center of mass. Come on, it's not a center of mass. You cannot do it. You cannot do that. That will give you a wrong result. Oof. You have to figure out the inertia about this point. This is about where the center of mass is. So, okay. About the center of mass, it would be mr squared upon 2 minus of m times of well, this distance squared, which is just going to be like 4 upon 3 pi, blah, blah. That thing squared. Okay, and then plus. So from here, now you want to go to here. Uh, that will be 1 minus of 4 upon 3 pi times r squared, m times of that. Yeah, that's the inertia. Oof. Time to calculate this. So it should be 3 pi over here. Alright. So it's going to be mr squared. Let's see, 1 upon 2 minus 4 upon 3 pi squared. Wow. And then plus this thing, it's got 1 plus 4 upon 3 pi squared, and you got minus 2 times of this thing. So minus 8 upon 3 pi. Uh huh. This is going to be what? Uh, MR squared, and then you got 3 upon 2 minus 8 upon 3 pi. That's the inertia. Wow. Unexpected. 3 upon 2 minus 8 upon. What? Did I mess up somewhere? No. No, it's all correct. Right, and that turns of omega squared. That should be the thing. So yeah. We can just send that over here. It's gonna be eight. Cool. So omega squared is just equal to MGR times eight upon three by one, all that stuff. Yeah. That's gonna be like one upon we just don't do it. Right. Eight upon so putting that three pi inside is gonna be three upon two times three pi uh minus eight. Perfect. So it's going to be like minus 16 over here and then got 16 right there. So like, uh, omega squared is going to be 16 and 16 upon uh, 9 pi minus 16. That's, have I seen this before? I don't know. MGR. Hey, I think I have seen this somewhere. Yeah. I have probably. Right. Well, whatever. But that's the thing. Okay, so let's just do a quick dimension analysis. So g is meter per second square, well, m, wait, why is there this m? 
m r squared as oh why did I not think about that m r squared that's how it's gonna be so this m cancels it should be this thing upon r so actually it should be like just g upon r and uh, now it's perfect okay that's our omega squared thing so, uh, square root of that is what we are looking for so omega will just be square root of all that stuff it's like 4 upon square root of 9 pi minus 16 and 9 pi is uh 3.14 times 9 whatever which is like 27 more than that of course so it's it's positive and everything it's correct i mean in the, in the domain of so it works uh yeah that should do it this should be the thing cool let's go to 28 Calculate the moment of inertia of a uniform rod of mass m length L about an axis passing through one end making angle theta equal to 45 degree with its length. So axis length is I don't know like that. It makes 45 degree with the length passing through one of its end. Okay. Uh length L and mass M, huh? Whatever. You know, I mean I've done these kind of questions so many different times. I won't even do it. The thing is like in this little dx thing, uh, what do I say? If you uh, call this thing as x, this coordinate as x, uh, the mass density, so uh, by that I just mean dm upon dx. Like this thing is a constant. And from that alone, you can just, yeah, yeah, you can just prove that it's gonna be ml squared. So not l squared, not this l, but instead uh, this, this complete thing, which is going to be l upon square root two, that thing squared upon three, right? It's a no-brainer. Just do it, right? Just use the fact that this, like each of these element uh, of dx or whatever, like delta x, so find an element, right? All of these, uh, they have equal masses. So I mean, the mass density in the x direction is constant. Using that, you can do it, right? Yeah, and x goes from this to that. <sighs> do I really have to guide you through all of this now? Okay, just do it integration so what you just want is like mr square of each of these small possible elements so yeah uh, dm times x square but then dm is just like the whole thing has mass m and then upon l upon square root 2 okay but well, yeah i'm living in akola it's in maharashtra right uh, yeah i mean that's what the question asked uh Anyway, let's let's focus on this thing. So, this is the mass density. Okay, that times uh, this guy's length, like it's just dx, right? Uh, this will be our dm thing, and then that times r squared. So it's gonna be this times x squared, and then integration of that guy from zero to uh, l upon square root two, right? Call this thing x naught or something. I don't know, some pi stuff. Uh, so yeah, it's gonna be m upon x naught. So if this thing is x naught, right? Calling it just like that. So it's going to be x naught cube upon 3 and that's just mx naught squared upon 3. Exactly the same formula that we usually get. But now x naught is l upon square root. So no big deal, right? It's going to be ml squared upon 6. Huh. Yeah. Okay, 29. Uh, what was I doing? Okay, 29. A ring rolls on horizontal surface without sliding. The velocity of the center is v. It encounters the step of height 0.3 r, where r is the radius of the ring. Calculate the angular velocity of the okay once sufficient friction to avoid slipping. Okay, I've seen this kind of question once, I think. Just once. Right. Uh angular velocity of the ring just after the impact, assuming that the ring does not return back. Right. Find the meaning of the value of uh, v so that the ring ascends the step. Uh, whatever. First question, I mean like the first part. So so we just want to figure out the angular velocity of the ring just after the impact and it rolls with v and okay you got this thing is like r and then you just have 0 0.3 r over here so this is going to be 0 0.7 r of course oof ah, what is this okay 0 0.7 r huh. i'm thinking of something Anyway, the thing is like it's going with V like that, so it, it can be decomposed into a component that is tangential to this uh this radius and 
a component that is uh, along this radius. Yes. Now, for that, we would need what this angle is. In other words, we would need, I mean, like this thing, it's just 90 degrees. So it's going to be 90 minus that angle, and then this is going to be the same angle, in fact. Right. And so this thing is 0.3 r, this whole thing is r or whatever. We would just want cosine of that angle. Hey, that's not that hard because like this is r, this thing is 0.7 r. So cosine of this angle is going to be 0.7. Now that means that this is going with v. This should have been 0.7 b. And this would be whatever it's going to be. I don't care about that. Thing is, its tangential velocity does not change. Right. Uh, sorry, uh, it's, it's tangent, I mean, what do we call it? Uh, yeah, on impact, the tangential velocity does not change uh, right away. Right? There's this impulse, of course. Uh huh, which is normal to this surface. And you might think, okay, there might be some kind of friction that makes this happen or something. But then, isn't that friction also like helping it go up or something? You know? Because what's going to happen is that this is going to rub against it, and that means there will be a friction in that direction, so it just makes that go up. The thing is, its uh, angular momentum about this point is kind of constant because normal uh, does not actually change the angular momentum. Moreover, this friction is just applied at this point, so yeah, well, that is constant. So its angular momentum about this whole point is uh, it's a constant, perfect, right? throughout the uh, collision, not talking about the motion after that, because there's going to be gravity, right? The big player, gravity, which which does change the angular momentum. So, yeah, that is there. But just after the collision, what's going to happen is that the angular momentum should be the same. And for that to happen, and because it's like stationary, this point becomes stationary. Yeah. <sighs> what was I doing? Sorry. Uh, okay, initially, Okay, what about like, okay, this thing is, uh, is this providing friction? Without sliding, okay, whatever. Uh, oh yeah, I mean, even if it does, it's not impulsive, so forget about that. Right. I mean, yeah, can't be impulsive. Then, it's got angular momentum position about this guy. Uh, okay, what was the angular momentum before it, before the impact? Uh, right, so just before the impact, center of mass was going in this direction, of course. And their angular velocity was like this. So, huh. What does that mean? That means this angular velocity is still going to be there because, okay, thing is, so there's angular momentum of this center of mass, so MBR, that thing, and then you got I omega so about this point, right? Because angular velocity about that is going to be, you get the idea, right? Of course. I think it's it's doable, you know. Right, 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 right. It's going to be I of this thing, yeah. And you can just do the fact that, uh, like this is zero point something. Uh, how do I how do I say what I want to tell you? Fine, let's just let's just do it, you know. So 0 0.7 uh, v. That time is the mass of this thing, and uh, that times this radius is just going to be r, of course. Yeah, that's the first part of the angular momentum. So of the center of mass, and then plus above the center of mass. Yes. So that is going to be like I c omega. Yes, so omega naught, if you will. Yeah, and. Uh, the thing is, like, V is just equal to omega times, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, V is equal to omega times R, so you can write that as 0 0.7, and you got MR squared omega, omega naught. Understandable. So now I C plus MR, okay, this is 0 0.7, so it's different, it's different. And now this is equal to, right, this angular momentum, this is equal to final angular momentum, so finally, if it's going at omega, and then you just have I, um, about this point, of course, it's going to be IC plus MR squared quite, quite much. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's for sure. IC plus MR squared. That makes sense. So that will give us the angular momentum. Sorry, angular velocity. Right. Of course. Of course, of course, of course. Does this make sense? Yes, it should. 
thing is if it was just going uh, without rolling right so if this whole thing was just going without rolling you wouldn't have this term and then and then that would be the thing that i actually uh, originally solved when i said that i kind of did solve uh, this kind of question right so i actually originally solved the question where you didn't have any angular velocity about center of mass so it was just sliding <laughs> yeah in this case it is not sliding it's rolling so you also have this extra turn okay so that's understandable Now what do we do? Uh, I mean, of course, just why to get the angular velocity? What what are we looking for? We are looking for where what's what this question is? It's twenty ninth. Calculate the angular velocity of the ring just after the impact. That's exactly what we are looking for. So that will give us angular velocity. Cool. Just do it. Angular velocity is going to be. And I see. So it's a it's a ring. Wait, what? Oh, it's a ring, huh? Like does disc or something? So it's gonna be a ring. It's gonna be MR squared, right? That MR squared thing cancels up anyway. So it's just gonna be IC. Oh, sorry, that is MR squared. You got omega naught plus uh, zero point seven omega naught, and then upon yeah, it's gonna be two because that cancels up. So this is just going to be one up one point four. Sorry, one point seven, and then upon two, which is uh, what am I doing? Zero point eight. Five, right? Omega naught. Uh, yeah. This is the thing. So zero point eight five omega. Naught. And guess what? Omega naught will be upon R. Makes sense. Perfect. And now the question is. For what value of v, minimum value of v, uh, the ring will ascend the step. So right now it's like this. This is how the ring is. Yeah. What we want to happen is that it should now be like that. Yes. Uh, or maybe we could do some something else. Or the the normal force on this thing is uh. Like in this direction, actually. But it's like omega is in this direction. Where's the centripetal acceleration? It sticks, right? Uh, wait. I think something is just really not going correctly. It does not go back. You are saying. Like it, 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 it um, absorbs the thing, and I don't know. It's not making sense. How can it not go back? There's this impulsive force on this, right? Uh, there's no centripetal acceleration. What are we talking about? The only way this could be happening is like if it sticks over there or something. Yeah, I mean, if this is like completely solid, this whole thing is very solid. And what would happen is, no matter what velocity you uh, send it with, it's gonna go. Go back, right? So the only way this could happen is that it must stick over here somehow. I don't know. It's like ADC or something, right? That happens. Now it starts going up like that. So, oh yeah. And then what happens after it goes up? Does it leave it or not? I I don't think it will leave it. It's just yeah. Go up and then, or maybe just uh, with that amount of. Right. So after it goes up, it still has a velocity in that direction. Maybe that's what's what's happening. And then it tears apart this adhesive bond. And just thinking, right? The way to do it is just energy conservation, of course. I mean the work energy theorem. Sorry. So this guy's center of mass is somewhere over here, right? Like what was that? This was. Uh, this thing is completely is R, and this is. 0.3 r, so this is going to be 0.7 r. It's 0.7 r above this, and then after that it becomes like that. So like it's r above this. So 0.3 r is uh, that was obvious actually. That was very obvious because step is of 0.3 r height. Right? So 0.3 r, uh, this is our h. That times mg. That's the work done by gravity, of course, which is actually negative. 
Yeah, right. And what we are th th thinking is that, well, yeah, like what happens is that this is four, goes up and then the uh, the centripetal force is taken care of by this uh, adhesive, whatever this is, right? So we don't have to worry about that equation. We just have to look for energy. Uh, yeah. So it is going to be equal to half i omega square. But i is of course about this this guy. Yeah, that's right. So we already know what i is in this case. It's going to be uh, two m r square. So this just becomes m r squared omega squared. Right. Perfect. And we know what omega is, so put that in there, you will get the thing. Right. Probably capital R. One of them cancels up. So 0 0.3 mg. This also cancels. 0 0.3 g is equal to uh, r omega squared, which is. So let's think about it. R omega is just uh, 0 0.85 v, and then omega is 0 0.85 v upon r. So it's going to be 0 0.85 squared, and uh, that is v squared upon r, right? There we go. Got the velocity. Why it should be that is. So v would just be so critical. It's going to be square root of 0 0.3 times g, and that upon 0 0.85, right? This is the thing. So that it can ascend. So V minimum is square root of 0 0.3 times G upon 0 0.85. Do we have to plug in a G as N or something? I don't know. I'm just going to leave it like that. Right. Uh, let's go to 30. 30 is any form rod of length 2a is placed horizontally on a fixed thin horizontal rail at right angles to the rail. Got a rail. Uh, okay, got a rod. Horizontal rail at right angles to the rail and is released from rest. Initially, the center of rod was at a distance a upon 3 from the rail. If the rod slips after it has turned, through an angle theta. What? 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 Oh, huh? I think this is just a single line, right? So it's a single, I don't know, whatever this is, like a steel bar or something, on which it is. Now its center of mass is 0 0.3 away from it. So this distance is only 0 0.3. Uh, sorry, A upon what I was saying. A upon 3 from the rail and uh, rod is of length 2a so like this whole thing is going to be a. right if the rod slips after it has turned through an angle uh, theta which is less than 90 degree what oh okay 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 now I understand what's happening uh, find the coefficient of friction between the rod and the and the rail Ooh. Kind of complicated, right? Just, I'm gonna draw uh, another view of this thing. So this is our rail. This is our rod of some thickness. I don't know. I mean, this is assuming it's gonna be very very thin or something. I drew it really bad. Rod is like something like this, I guess. Hey, come on, auto fill. No, it's not doing it. Ah, now it's doing it. This is our rod, and this is our, our rail, uh, center of mass over here. So it'll be like this, right? It's going to be a upon 3. Okay, so it's on it. Yeah, there's friction force like that. This is the angle it makes with the uh, uh, with the horizontal, let's say it's theta, right? This, you got some friction force, so there's this normal force over here, and then you got some friction force. Okay, this is not like Ah, uh, how do I say? It's in 3D. You just have to imagine. So friction force is in that direction. Uh, this is normal force, which is of course normal to the whole rod. And uh, yeah, that's all it is, right? And then you got gravity. That's the main thing. Okay. So if this just is not moving, right? Then you can write uh, the centripetal acceleration equation, and then also actually the torque equation because 
that is the angular acceleration so we can do that as well i guess right of course so this angle is theta and uh, what what will this angle be so be theta as well right because that angle is going to be like minus theta and everything so yeah uh, what am I doing? Theta, this angle is 90 degrees, so 90 plus theta. This angle is 90 degrees, so it's gonna be 90 degrees. Theta. It's gonna be theta right there, of course. So the torque about this point is gonna be mg cosine theta times a upon 3, and uh, that upon the inertia about this point, yes. Uh, so the notion about this point uh, that would have been ml squared upon 12 but now it's like different for some reason oh uh, yeah so just m a squared upon 3 will also do and then it's going to be m a upon 3 squared so a squared upon 9 right which is going to be 4 m a squared upon 9 Yes, uh, so 1 A cancels, 1 3 cancels with 3, what is like 3 4 M cancels, 3 4 G cosine theta upon uh, A. That's our angular acceleration. And then this times of A upon 3, right? That's our actual acceleration in this. Nah, let's just write on the angular acceleration. The angular acceleration is just going to be uh, 3 4 G cosine theta upon A. What about the centripetal acceleration? So that will just be uh, omega squared r, right? For, for this stuff also. So yeah, and that is equal to let's see. Um, you got this friction force right there. You got this normal, she's not doing anything. You got this gravity force or some component of it in that direction, right? So f minus mg sine theta. And of course, like, there's normal in that. What is this normal really doing? Yeah, I mean, you have to figure out the normal in the end. So, what is that really doing? Hey. Wait, you know that uh, the center of mass is going in this direction, so the, the, the tangential direction of, of this rod. But then to that, I mean, that direction is just opposite to this normal direction. Yes? Oh, and this friction is just in that, but it's not, inter it's not inter interfering with that. So, hey, this is achievable. What we would have is like mg cosine theta minus the normal force. Uh, that would be equal to mass of this whole thing, that's the acceleration, which is just alpha times r. So r is just a upon 3 in this case. Yes. That's another equation. And what, what was this equation? What was I doing? Uh, f, f minus mg sine theta. Yes. Uh, yeah, that would be our m omega squared r, which is like a upon three, of course. Right. Now that's understandable. Thing is, the equation that ties all of this up is basically like f is or equal to mu times normal. This is what we can use. Yeah. I mean, the friction thing changes throughout this Hmm. And we know like, okay, from this, we can say how uh, omega changes with with the theta value, right? What it's saying is that omega squared upon 2 is equal to 3 fourth g upon a. And then integration so sine theta goes from 0 to theta, so sine theta, just like that. Yeah, doable. It's not just energy equation, right? This is the energy equation and you got these two other equations, right? So, you just put that everywhere, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 3 upon 2, g upon a, sine theta. Uh, it's gonna be like, oof, oof, how am I supposed to do this? Right, I mean, you can just put these equations in here and let's, let's hope something nice comes out. So, uh, f is equal to mg sine theta, plus m a upon 3 omega squared, which is that 3 cancels, okay, that a also cancels, it's going to be g sine theta, uh, which is also just m g sine theta, that's unexpected. 
so it's two empty sign huh the friction force is just two empty sign theta okay what about normal force so normal force is equal to mg cosine theta minus all of this so mg cosine theta minus m alpha times a upon 3 well that cancels okay so it's gonna be uh mg cosine theta upon 4 which is 3 fourth of mg cosine theta yes and then this equation just tells us that uh 2 sine theta should be less than or equal to mu times uh 3 fourth cosine theta so that this uh, will go in that circle right which which means tan theta is less than or equal to 3 8 of mu yes so that so the theta at which it will break off is just tan inverse of 3 8 mu that's what we want right yeah so or maybe you can just do mu so mu should be equal to right i mean it's the critical condition now because that's they are using theta for the critical condition we use it for general condition hey, whatever mu is equal to eight third of tan theta that should be doing it yep <sighs> okay uh, and that's just going to be equal to eight third of so wait that's it huh that's all they said wow they didn't give us what theta is huh fine just leave it like that 31st a spherical ball of radius r and mass m collides with a fixed surface before impact the center of the ball has velocity v naught directed normal to the fixed surface uh-huh and an inverse of the omega okay assuming the normal velocity is reversed with the same magnitude uh Oh, so like, boom, calculate the net velocity of center of mass and the angular velocity of the, of the ball after the impact. Position of friction between the surfaces is mu. Okay, thing is, uh, this guy, so like this point over here, it is going in this direction. So let's have this kinetic friction acting, which is just uh, the normal force times mu. So integration of that, so mu integration n dt, that's just the mu times uh, yeah it's just mu times impulse so mu times impulse is the force uh put on by friction in, on on this guy so it, it, sorry it's the momentum due to friction on this guy yes right and it returns with the same uh, velocity you are saying oh yeah so like the moment the the impulse actually is just uh so in the normal direction just uh 2mv naught so mu times 2 mv naught <laughs> yeah uh that was put on this guy in this direction yes right yeah and then it was to the ball after the impact mm -hmm. you know of course to angular uh well also the i mean consideration about this point wherever the contact happens yes yeah right the thing is like this guy will start moving in this kind of direction and oof what can i even say about it yeah like it's just got r over here right right right, right. it's doable it's, it's doable right so what do we have uh it, it was mv naught in this direction it's going to be two mv naught directions like it gained a velocity of uh two mu v naught in this direction and now it has a v naught in this direction and now let's say it's going with angular velocity omega what will happen is that um i c omega uh should be equal to so because it's moving like that and it was at a distance r from it so yeah it's going to be ic omega minus was going in the opposite direction minus mvr it's going to be 2 m mr cross v you get the idea it's going to be minus uh, 2 mu naught v that times r and that times m wow right this all of this is just going to be equal to 
uh, I C omega naught. So initially, it was a static momentum about this point, uh, the contact point, right? So from this, you can figure out what omega is. So omega is just omega naught plus. Oh wait. Yeah, something just really messed up. Friction is supposed to be in that direction. Now it's. Uh, oh sorry, oh sorry. Uh, the friction is in this direction, right? So it's gonna go, it's gonna go like that actually. So positive. Yeah. So this center of mass is going with v naught and two mu v naught, right? And this is the equation that we have to use. So it's gonna be we got naught minus all of this upon i c two mu r m v naught upon i c. I c is what? So what kind of a body is this? It's a spherical ball, huh? It's gonna be two fifth of mr squared. This cancels, except that one r. So, right, that just tells us okay, omega is just omega naught minus it cancels as well fifth. Okay, five mu v naught upon r. Right, that's the thing. Okay, we got it. Now, what do they want us to do? That's what you want. Okay. Uh, calculate the net velocity of center of mass. Net velocity. That's the magnitude, of course. And the angular velocity of the ball after impact. Right. So, center of mass, the net velocity of this guy. It's gonna be like v naught square root of one plus four mu squared, right? And then you have angular velocity. So the final angular velocity, which is gonna be like this guy, omega naught minus five mu v naught upon r. Did they give us any kind of values? No. So just gonna use this thing, like that. Yeah, thirty two. A solid body starts rotating about stationary axis with angular acceleration something where A is this thing. How soon after beginning of uh, rotation with, will the total acceleration vector of an arbitrary point on the body form 60 degree minutes velocity vector? Huh. Acceleration is given to so angular acceleration. Uh, what is the acceleration vector of an arbitrary body? Oh, so the total, right. So the thing is alpha r is this in this direction and you got omega squared r. Uh, the centimeter acceleration, right? Yeah. So, uh, if we reduce by omega, we just want the angle, right? Where it's velocity vector. Wait, what? Oh, the velocity vector is completely in that tangential direction. So, omega squared in that direction, I'll find this direction. We want to find what this angle is. So, uh, theta will just be tan inverse of omega squared upon alpha. That's it. That's what we want to find. So after what time? And then they gave us the angle of acceleration and how soon after the beginning of rotation will the total acceleration vector uh, of an arbitrary point on of the body form? Uh, oh, so A is given. Okay, 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 okay. So what's omega squared? Right, let's do it. So omega will just be a t squared upon two, and let's just—I mean, okay—it starts rotating, so it's going to be zero initially, right? So omega squared will just be a squared t power four upon four, and then alpha is already just a t. So omega squared upon alpha is just a t cube upon four. This thing will just be a t cube upon four. It should be unit less. Is it? Ah, so a, what? Yeah, it is. Uh, you got a cube over here, right? So we eighty cube upon four. Yeah, that should do it. Perfect. So there we go. And you don't want uh, theta to you. They just want uh, t. It's like eighty cube upon four is equal to tan theta. That should do it. Yeah. So t is going to be equal to the cube root of. Four tan theta upon a. Yep, that's what we want. 
how soon, right? Okay, let's do it. It's going to be just put that as an answer first of all. Uh, so it's going to be what? It's got cube root four and theta is so it's sixty degrees. So it's going to be square root three. And then upon a, a is this so two hundred power negative two. I don't know how this helps because cube root. Wow. Hmm. Got two right there. So it's going to be two hundred square root three. What? Oh. Two hundred square root three. Well, you can definitely write as like eight times of twenty five and stuff. Well, so you can take that two out. It's gonna be two. Then you got cube root of twenty five square root three. Whatever that, yeah, is okay. More like two times five power two third, and then you got three power <laughs> one upon six, right? Or I don't know. This is a this is a better. Looks cleaner. Right, they should do it. Uh huh. Let's go to thirty-three. I need more space. <laughs> a solid body rotates with deceleration about a stationary axis with angular ex uh, deceleration beta proportional to square root of omega, where omega is in uh, is its angular velocity. Okay. Find the mean average. What mean angular velocity of the body averaged over uh, the whole time of rotation? If at the initial moment of time its angular velocity has was was equal to omega naught. Uh, so the oh okay mean average velocity. This can be like the change in theta thing upon the time required, right? So they gave the deceleration. Find what theta is. That's what you are saying. Uh, Wait, what whole time of rotation? What do you mean by that? I don't understand what you are saying. Anyway, just uh, start solving this. Like d omega upon d t is equal to negative square root of omega. So, yeah, like negative omega power negative one upon two d omega is equal to d t. So uh, that's gonna be negative two omega power one upon two square root of omega. Uh, it should be like square root of omega minus root of omega naught. Right. This is going to be equal to a uh, time. Yes. That's that's a good equation. Okay. Now we have to ah, it's not good. We we'll have to square and what not. Ah, let's do a point two. Not good. Okay. Let's let's do it anyway. Square this. Oh, fine. Right. Let's let's do it. I'm mean, ready to do it though. Hey, wait. Square root of uh, it's proportional. Oh no. Oh no. It should be negative k omega. Mm-hmm. That is not good. It's gonna have k everywhere, huh? So my well just put k d t right there. So it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be t times of k. So k t upon That means omega is going to be omega not squared plus k upon two. So like k squared upon four t squared, and then you got minus square root of omega not times k and then times t. Yes, and now from that you can figure out what theta is. So theta is just omega not squared times t plus k squared upon twelve t cube. Uh, and wait, you want the Uh, mean angular velocity of the body average over the whole time of rotation. What do you mean by the whole time of rotation? So I think when it will stop or something. Oh yeah, that is the thing. That must be the thing. Right. So it's deceleration all of the time, right? Huh? When will it stop? When will your omega become zero? Uh, that will happen when you have k t upon two is equal to uh, square root of omega. Yes. So your k t will just become equal to two square root of omega. That's that's when it will happen. Okay. Right. 
So you got this thing, huh? K squared upon 12 T cube. Uh, yes. Then minus square root of omega naught K T squared upon 2. What we are looking for is theta upon T. So our objective is just omega naught squared plus, well, this is like K T squared, isn't it? K T squared and that upon 12 and then minus square root of omega naught and then it's got K T. Uh, yeah, because that T is gone now. Huh? So that extra T is gone. And now it's going to be like this. So just put this everywhere. It's going to be omega naught squared plus 4 omega squared upon or 12, which is just omega squared upon. Why oh, should be omega naught squared? Sorry. So um, omega naught squared upon 4, right? Oh, no. Sorry. 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 Upon 3 minus square root of omega got 2 square root of. Okay, that's going to be uh, just uh, omega naught. Yeah. Oh, it's supposed to be uh, just just that, not square. Why did I do that? Squared, squared. Yeah. And this as well. It should not be that. It's just gonna be omega naught. Right. That's better. Uh huh. So it's gonna be just omega naught upon three. That's the angular velocity. Mean angular velocity. Thirty-three done. Let's just move that to this page instead. Right, 34. Solid body rotates about a stationary axis so that its angular velocity depends on the rotation angle phi as omega is equal to omega naught minus a phi. Okay, these are positive constants. Stationary axis and whatever. Okay, at the moment t is equal to zero, the angle phi is zero. Okay. Find the time dependence of the rotation angle, so of phi is equal to time, uh, and then the angle of velocity. Oh, this is not that bad. Yeah, it doesn't look that bad, you know. So this is like what t phi upon uh, omega naught minus a phi is equal to dt, right? Just integrate this guy. It's going to be like negative one upon a natural log of so omega naught minus a phi. So initially the phi is uh, zero, right? So omega naught, just like that. And that's going to be equal to uh, time, yes? Right. So that's it. That is, yeah, it's going to give us what uh, what phi is, yes. So there we go. Omega naught minus a phi. I'm going to go with this thing. One minus a upon omega naught times phi. That is equal to uh, e power negative t upon a. So phi is equal to uh, omega naught upon a times 1 minus of e power negative t upon a. That should make sense. Once you have this, I mean, you have everything because just differentiated once, you will get the time dependence of omega. Right, so A is done. A was very easy, and B is even easier. And also the angular velocity, of course. Just differentiating it, we'll get omega is equal to omega naught upon a. Well, it's gonna be like one upon a everywhere, I guess. Wait, is this correct? It must be right. Yeah, well, that must be correct. Uh, think about it. Okay, does this uh, follow this equation that omega is equal to, we'll see, we'll see, you know. We can just use this directly, why not? So omega naught minus a times phi. So omega naught common, then 1 minus of a phi upon omega naught whatever. But that was just going to be e power negative t upon a, right? Yeah. Huh, something's not correct about this. Yeah, that's supposed to be like... Wait, what? No, something isn't... Oh, sorry. It should be e power negative a t. What am I doing? So you had to divide by uh, negative a. And then when you, when you send that to the other side, it's going to be a t. Sorry. Oh, it's supposed to be like this. Wait, yeah. That, that makes sense. It's like the first degree equation. Uh, sorry, first degree kinetic thing. So the rate constant in this is uh, negative a phi or something like that. 
Yes. Yeah, very much similar to that. Uh -huh. But once again, let's just do it. Right? So, omega naught minus A5 is equal to dt. What was this? Uh, divided by that's like d to 1 upon a natural log of omega naught minus 1 minus of a phi upon omega naught is equal to time and then it was supposed to be negative a times uh, t and all that stuff and yeah it works out okay 35th okay a solid body starts rotating about a stationary axis with angular uh, deceleration beta is equal to d naught cosine phi Right, phi is the angle of rotation from the initial point. Find the angular velocity of the body as a function of phi. <laughs> Sorry, what kind of question is this? <laughs> right, I mean, okay, let's do it. Yeah, uh, right. So, you know, like beta is just going to be uh, omega d omega upon d phi, and that just means like, wow, omega squared upon 2 uh, as it goes up something, something. Well, starts rotating. So, theta is equal to 0, sorry, phi is equal to 0, and Omega is equal to zero at t equal to zero. So omega squared upon two is equal to just the integration of this guy, of course. So b naught and then sine phi and initially phi is zero, so this goes to zero and yeah, nice. Omega is just square root of two b naught sine phi. That's it. That's our angular velocity. Sure. It's going to be plus minus, yeah, it's going to be plus minus though. So, huh. Hey, no, oh, it's not first degree. Okay, this is different. I wish it was uh, something like a simple harmonic motion, which is not. Okay. Right. So, uh, initially, initially, your angular acceleration is like positive because your phi is zero and everything so it starts off putting more and more omega right there and then at some point phi reaches phi upon two and then you start to get a lower value and then keeps on going in it's sine phi right there. that doesn't make sense wait what no wait not correct but what what happens when phi becomes more than phi? Sorry, uh, more than phi. Yeah, what will happen at happen at that point? I I don't understand this. Okay, so initially, uh, yeah, so like for the initial kind of condition at least, this is what it's like. So uh, at zero, your omega is zero. At phi, right till that, it's gonna be some kind of square root sine phi thing yeah whatever just a flattened out sine curve right so till uh pi upon two your cosine phi thing is uh, positive so it's increasing your omega and then after that it starts to decrease but it takes some time before it actually drops out to zero and what would happen after that after pi so at pi your uh Beta becomes uh, zero, but your omega is also zero. Oh, no, no, this is wrong. At phi, your beta is not zero. At pi upon two, it was zero. So at phi, uh, did I mess up somewhere? I guess I did. Oof. So, okay. Wow. Right, your omega is zero, but now your beta is actually negative, so it's gonna go down, right? So it's, there's only one thing, right? After pi, uh, so till three pi upon two, your cosine phi thing is just negative, so it's gonna go down. And we know it should always follow this equation, so not this equation. This what this is for this thing. So omega squared upon two is equal to, uh, so omega squared is equal to two b naught sine phi. It should always follow that. So it's still just uh, some kind of like flatten out curve, but now uh, right here is going to be negative, right? So, huh? Okay, understandable. I mean, wait, think about it. 
what happens when your sine phi somehow becomes negative? Huh. It will become negative, right? So after pi, this will start to become negative and it should not make sense actually, but for some reason it is making sense. How could this be? So this will be just negative V naught is our uh, angular acceleration. So it's, it's decreasing or omega, okay. I got that it's gonna decrease it by uh, yeah. negative one. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh come on, right? Your omega is gonna decrease, and your phi will. Well, omega is zero, huh? Oh, it's not like this. Sorry, sorry. Uh huh. huh. Now I understand what's going on. It is not going any further than that. That's it. That's it. And now it's gonna go back because your omega will start to become more and more negative. Guess what? It's gonna go like this. Right. That makes sense. Of course. What's the derivative of omega at a uh, pi? It will be like you got the square root of two beta, right? Keep two beta not uh, right there. And then the rate of this thing is just. Um, what? What am I doing? Uh, one two sort of sine phi. You got cosine phi, and then yeah, it's just like that. So, like as phi approaches pi, this thing approaches. Oh, oh no! This is a asymptotic thing. Okay, this is not going good. It approaches like negative infinity, so it's gonna be like a circle. Oof. What is this? What is this? But then isn't it just square root of yeah, how does that make any sense? The sine function is pretty much very normal, and then when you take the square root of that, somehow it becomes this crazy thing. What what is this? Right, so derivative just before phi, uh, that's gonna be like cosine phi, which is approaching negative one, and then this is approaching, it, it, yeah, like one upon square root of sine phi is approaching infinity. So this thing is going to negative infinity, but then it's just square root of sine phi. How can that happen? Square root of sine phi <sighs> doesn't make any sense. What happened when I took the square root? I don't know what happened, but it's saying that okay this is actually uh, like an actual circle or something like that more like an elliptical thing i don't know right so sine phi that would be like that square root of sine phi uh so this is always below one right it's gonna increase all of these right something like that it's gonna reach there. It's gonna go like that. Yeah. Uh, wow. That's not good. And then the denominator as well it does this thing. So my guys, a function of phi is kind of problematic because it's like not a function in the first place. It's two valued. Ah. Angular velocity as a function of uh, omega is not good. As a function of time, maybe it might be doable, but then not like this. What is this? Draw the plot is dependent. Fine, so not draw it out. I'm gonna say it's plus minus. It is gonna work. For some phi, it could have both. And like, it has two different values. Of... Let's do it. Yeah, I will like to graph this out actually. Once I'm done with it, I'm gonna graph it out. So, yeah. You should probably like 
get closer to it, but much closer to it actually. So this is how it should be. Right. So this is like zero, this thing is pi. Oops. And yeah, this is the y axis, this thing is the x axis. Or I should say like this is the omega axis and this is the phi axis. Right. This is it. Okay, let's go to 36 now. So this is a, uh, a rotating disc figure uh, moves in positive direction of the x-axis. Find the equation or uh, describe the position of its and its axis of rotation. Hmm. If at the initial moment the axis C of the disc was located at point uh, O after which it moved. Axis of the oh yeah so the center of mass okay uh read it point o up okay understandable what do we have instantaneous axis of rotation huh so some point if it I mean yeah 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 that's that's gonna happen okay it wants to be been like that but r over here omega r in this direction what should happen is that omega r plus b is equal to zero so your r should just be equal to negative b upon omega in other words it's like somewhere over here actually right so v upon omega up so y is equal to v upon omega that's it <laughs> because omega is constant and wow this was easy and then of course x is just like it's just up it's just above the center of mass wow and then x is just going to be like B times T, huh? This was so easy, right? Oh, oh yeah, it's not just V times T. It's like integration of V times T. Because okay, I see the I see the sub questions now, right? Right, okay, let's do it. So, uh, first, if it moves with a constant velocity b while the disk starts rotating counterclockwise with a constant angular acceleration uh, beta. Right, let's go like that. b in this direction stands, cancels out. Yes, maybe upon omega of course. With a constant, so v is constant and then omega changes. Initial angular velocity is uh, zero. Okay, nice. It's gonna be v upon uh, beta t, and it's just gonna be v times t, of course. Yeah, it's gonna be now. Uh, with a constant acceleration omega, sorry, w. Sorry. Wait, the w. Oh, yeah, I see where this is coming from. This is probably inspired from Irodo. Because only those people use W. Nobody uses W, alright? And the zero initial velocity. What? Oh, now that just means WT, of course. Yeah. yeah. Otherwise, it would be WT plus something. Uh, while the disk rotates uh, counterclockwise with a constant angular velocity omega. Counterclockwise. And over here as well is counterclockwise. So, yeah. Angular velocity omega. It's going to be v upon omega, of course, but then v is changing. So it's like w t upon uh, omega. That does it. Right. Uh, 37. But I didn't see this question anywhere in Erodo. Did I? Maybe I didn't, I didn't give it much thought or something. Okay, next. A cylinder rolls without slipping over a horizontal plane. The radius of the cylinder is equal to r. Okay, rolls without slipping, radius is equal to r, find curvature radii of the trajectory is traced down at the points A and B. Right, A is the easiest one. Uh, so first of all, just clarify something. The accelerations that I will be using, so the set, the, yeah, the absolute accelerations, so as seen in the ground frame, those will be the same as seen uh, by the center of mass because center of mass is an iner inertial frame, right? So right it's an inertial frame and that's why this will happen uh-huh 
because rose has been out slipping so the friction is not doing any work over here and no other force is there so that's normal force and everything but that also doesn't do, uh, doesn't do any work gravity doesn't do any work so as a matter of fact the uh, the velocity of this whole thing and the energy and angular velocity and everything that's a constant right and that means it's a it's a inertial frame the center of mass right and because of that whatever acceleration you have uh, as in the center of mass the same thing as seen in the ground frame so it's going to be omega squared r inside it's like omega squared r inside everything but the velocity is different okay velocity is like something in that direction something in that direction something like that right yeah okay find the curvature radii of the trajectory traced out so it's like a cy cycloid isn't it mm -hmm. uh by the points a b s a and b huh okay a is like really easy so a is just moving with 2v in this direction why is this w wait what what is this Oh, it's moving with a uh, centimeter x. Wow, no. Okay, it's moving with uh, an acceleration. That's not good. You should have told me that. But W is generally just used for uh, acceleration, right? So that must be the thing over here. But they didn't tell me anything about it. So what should I do with it? I don't know. I'm just going to say, yeah, W is there. Okay. But then once again, we, do, we can do the same thing. So the acceleration as seen by the center of mass plus the acceleration of the center of mass, right? So the relative, I mean, position thing, right? From that, just double differentiate, you will get that thing. So as in the center of mass, right? Uh, it's just like has a velocity in that direction. And then, okay, you got velocity in that direction. I'm huh? oh, sorry, acceleration in this direction. And the velocity is kind of, yeah, it also is like changing. Uh, so it's gonna change with time though. Uh, wait, maybe it's not like it's changing with. What is this W? What do I make of it? You didn't give me what it's supposed to be. Or maybe they just didn't. Yeah, I, uh, and also like they didn't actually tell us what Omega is. Uh, okay, that doesn't actually matter because. It's gonna be constant, most likely. Uh, yeah. But what is this W supposed to be? I don't know. Without knowing the relation between W and Omega, it's not doable, right? It's just not doable. So I'm gonna assume that it's actually moving uh, without acceleration, right? Even though it might not be. But let's do it like that. So then A is like the easiest thing because it just has 2V velocity like that. Or you can say 2R omega. Yes. And uh, that upon, so square of that thing. So it's going to be like 4R squared omega squared. And that upon R. Sorry, that upon the acceleration. What am I saying? Uh, that upon the acceleration. So it's going to be omega squared R. So it's going to be 4R, of course. 4R is the... Uh, radius so say it is curvature what about b though so b is different it has sorry uh it has a velocity in this direction so you got omega r but then it also has velocity in that direction which is also omega r and it has uh, an acceleration like this omega squared r what do we make of it the thing is this velocity that is actually tangential to the path right so uh, we don't need to make components of the velocity. We need to make components of this acceleration actually. It's only 45 degrees right there. It's like 45 degrees right there. So yeah, it's like square root 2 omega r and this is equal to uh, omega squared r upon square root 2. The other component is just the tangential support. That's going to be the angular acceleration. And this is going to be the centripetal acceleration if it was already in the circle, right? What that means is, yeah, the radius will just be this guy squared. So v squared upon uh, acceleration that's going to be three is yes so it's going to be two omega squared r squared and that upon uh just that okay next squared r upon square root two hmm. unexpected whatever 
for this cancels Let's get r 2 square root 2 uh, r yeah okay 38 A disk A of mass M sliding over a smooth horizontal surface with velocity V experiences a perfectly elastic collision with a smooth stationary wall at point O. Okay, this moves like this. Smooth horizontal surface. So this whole thing okay, is the top view. Perfectly elastic collision with a small stationary wall. Oh, the angle between the, between the motion direction of the disk and normal of the wall is equal to alpha. So boom boom okay it's a smooth wall huh it's no friction right it will be the motion direction of the disc and the normal of the wall is alpha fine the and is this like elastic collision yes perfectly elastic the points relative to the to which the angular momentum m of the disc remains constant in this process ah right so the thing is momentum is in this direction right momentum is like that transferred on this guy of course so the the thing is like for a straight uh moving object angular momentum is constant anyway so it's not changing it's not changing it's not changing boom it changes right it, it will change if this angular momentum uh crossed with so r cross p right if that somehow uh becomes non-zero so uh for that to happen the angle between r and p that must be non-zero right that that's all it is so take any point that is not on the normal it will work what's the big deal now yeah so it will right it will be non-zero for those ones. what we want is like it should remain constant right that's just all the points on this normal of course <laughs> any other point uh you take and then the, the r vector it will have some angle with this normal vector so that doesn't work but any point on the normal right it will work Yeah, sure. So A is easy to do. All points on the normal. Okay, B. The magnitude of the increment of vector of the disk's angular momentum led to point O dash, which is located in the plane of a uh, disk motion at a distance L from the point O. So this is the thing and then you got yeah whatever. So we want the magnitude of the increment of uh vector of the disks and the momentum. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. The the magnitude of the vector, the change in angular momentum thing, of course. So right. I mean you can of course always do like uh, R cross P and that just give us uh what's the what's the this comfort like that's gonna be like v cosine of alpha of course so uh 2mv cosine alpha and that times l that is the angular momentum change right but i want to show in a different way that it's uh, still the same thing so what i will do is actually figure out the angular momentum change so right this is going to be l and this is 45 degrees right no, oh, it's not. It's not. It is 90 minus alpha right here. Sorry. And this thing is also 90 minus alpha. So it's going to be alpha right here, alpha right here. Right? These are the perpendicular distances from these uh, lines of uh, the velocity. What is this distance going to be? This distance is just L cosine alpha. So right here, the angular momentum is... Um, you got V right here and then V L cosine alpha M V L cosine alpha but that is in uh, the clockwise sense and over here it's in the anti-clockwise sense and that's why 2 M V cosine alpha L same, same stuff right yeah it works out so there we go that's the answer okay 39 a small ball of mass M suspended from the ceiling at a point O by a thread of length L moves along a horizontal circle with a constant angular velocity omega. Okay, related to which point is the angular momentum M of the uh, ball remains constant. Find the... Oh yeah, okay, I understand this thing. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Find the magnitude of the increment of the vector of ball's angular momentum related to point O. Right. Picked up during half a revolution. Okay. Okay, okay. During half a revolution. So the other part is more calculated. First part is, yeah, whatever. Thing is, R cross V should be a constant. Uh, right. Uh, if that has to happen, more like the derivative of R cross V should be a constant. Ah, uh, it's not what we want, do we? Uh, like a torque on it, you could do that. Ah, uh, whatever, just, uh, just look at this. So, the derivative of R cross P must be constant. If uh, the point is, uh, so as seen by O, it is, or I don't know, it's like this, and then it's got C right here. Horizontal circle with constant angular velocity omega. Right. So, magnitude of increment of the vector of uh, ball's angular momentum related to a point O, picked up during half a revolution, whatever. Okay, so as seen by C, so if you have some other point, say um, capital R vector, right, that's the other point, okay. And then you got this point, so it's positioned at the same by small r vector, and its velocity is like this v vector. Uh, yeah, what should happen is that this r minus r things so like r vector minus capital R vector uh, cross v vector. This should be uh, not changing with time, so the derivative of that should be equal to zero. Now you can just use the uh, the product rule for cross product, right? So it's still the same thing. Okay, you can just find a derivation for that easily I guess or just do it yourself. Thing is first take the derivative of this guy. So R vector is not changing. So it's just gonna be derivative of this guy. So the V vector cross V vector. Okay. And then plus uh this time the derivative of this guy. So that will be R vector minus capital R vector and then cross acceleration vector. So acceleration vector is uh because it is moving in a con in just a constant velocity thing and whatever it is going to be omega squared r, but in but in uh, but in uh, this direction, it's, it's going to be like negative omega squared r vector. Yes, this must be zero. What that means is, uh, well, this is going to be zero anyway. Uh, so just take that eh, negative omega squared cancels out. It's so like r vector cross r vector. This is going to be zero, and then you start. Yeah, capital R vector cross small r vector that should be equal to zero. That should happen. So, uh, right, and this should happen for all values of r vector throughout the motion. So the only way that could happen is that you your point must be on this line. Yeah, because it's perpendicular to literally all of the vectors on this uh, horizontal plane. So there we go. All of the points on this axis thing. Right. So it's subjective. I could write down a whole, you know, explanation for this, but hey, I just gave it to you. So I won't write that down. Okay. And we also want magnitude of the increment of vector of ball's angular momentum relative to a uh, point O picked up during half a revolution. Okay, cool. So it moves along the circle with angular velocity omega. Wait, oh no, you have to figure out a theta for this thing. Ah, uh, because you will need the velocity. Ah, uh, this is so frustrating. Fine. So for this guy, if it's not um, going up or down, right? Uh, so in the rotating frame in which this, this, uh, this guy is like, not moving or something. This have centrifugal force in this direction. You got mg in that direction, and then you have this tension in that direction, right? That's the problem. The tension in that direction. So, uh, yeah, and it makes theta with it. Let's say this angle is theta. Should I say that's theta or not? Whatever. If that's theta, and then this is just omega squared r, where r is of course like l cosine theta. Yeah. Oops. But that happened. L cosine theta. And then you got mg over here. So ML, whatever. 
this is how it's gonna be so this balances that completely that just means right you form this triangle and stuff so uh tan theta is just equal to g upon omega squared l cosine theta is equal to tan theta so like sine theta upon sine theta this cancels so g is equal to omega squared l sine theta yes okay so now we know what sine theta is right sine theta is just g upon uh, omega squared l right 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 and now we can deal with it so <clears throat> okay once again what was i doing oh oh sorry no no it's right it's right we uh, applied the pseudo force centripetal force right and that's why it does it's all okay no problem Huh. Yes, and now what do we need? Right, so you got this uh, L over here. You got some velocity, which we'll figure out later because now we know what sine theta is. It's just going to be like omega times L, like L cosine theta, right? That's all we really need. So that is, that's very doable. Right, it's got velocity V. Uh, so remember, it's going to be R cross V vector, so MR cross V vector. So it's, it's pointing in this direction. Yes, it's going to make this is theta, it's going to be 90 minus theta right here. That's how angular momentum is pointing. So it's uh, it's 90 minus L right here. And then after a half circle, it's pointing like that. Once again, 90 minus theta. So we want a change in these. So you just uh, make negative of this guy and uh, add over here. So it's going to be L cosine of 90 minus theta, of course, uh, which is L sine theta. It's like 2L sine theta. So 2L sine theta, which will just be uh, L and then v r cross v vector then you got sine theta yes yeah. oh come on please don't please don't square that thing. okay right r cross v this angular momentum m I, I should not forget that 2 m 2 m l v cross uh, and then sine theta so 2 m l v sine theta that's the thing that's the magnitude that we're looking for and now to figure out what v is which is 2 omega times L cosine theta. So this will be ML omega 2 sine theta cosine theta. It's like sine of 2 theta. Nice. This is the thing. And of course, like, you know what? Yeah, you know what sine theta is. You don't know what uh, sine 2 theta is. Uh oh. You just leave it like that. So sine theta cosine theta sine theta is going to be g upon omega squared l and then cosine theta is oof yeah this thing whatever just to simplify this a bit this cancels this cancels so 2 mg upon uh, omega yeah square root of 1 minus g squared upon omega power 4 times l squared yes next question last question that i'll do in this video 40 so about why did i do that i don't know i just clicked right a ball of mass m falls down without initial velocity from a height h over earth surface find the increment of ball's angular momentum vector picked up during the time uh so height h over the earth surface so this is h is less than less than less than uh the radius so find the find the increment of the ball's angular momentum vector picked up during the time of falling related to the point o of the reference frame moving translationally in horizontal direction to velocity of v ball starts fall from the point o oh the air drag is to be neglected so okay this is like uh-huh so o is moving in this direction and then this ball v is going in that direction yes uh so right now it's like okay this is how it's going to be yeah Understandable, understandable. Wait a second, that's going in. So, as seen by O, right? 
in the reference frame of O. Oh, but then uh, if as seen by O, this ball is always moving like this actually. Sorry, uh, like this. Yes, so its radius is like, ah, its radius vector is always with the velocity vector. No, no, it's accelerating downwards. That's the thing. That's why it's changing. Okay, okay, now I understand what's happening. Mm -hmm. Not minus GT acceleration downward. Yeah. Oh, God. So you will have to figure out what R vector will be in that case. And uh, it is so not good. And initially it's zero, I guess. Yeah, initially it's zero. Fine. Initially, it had some velocity in this direction, so like going in, going like that. It's edge height above it. It's gonna fall off like this. But what velocity will it fall, and what's the radius vector when it falls? And uh, yeah, that's that's what we wanna figure out. Oh, right. Let's try, write down some equations. So, what is this guy's position really? Let's just say the downward velocity to so the downward, uh, uh, right. So the downward direction is positive y axis, and uh, the direction wherever it's going, it's its initial velocity ball, as seen by this uh, frame. That is, I don't know, positive x. We just want the magnitude, right? So then, yeah, uh, so the downward is like that. It's gonna be gt squared upon 2. And then you got Vt. This is the uh, the coordinates of this point, right? At time t. This is velocity at that time is going to be v, and then you got gt, right? And now, yeah, just r cross v. That should be the thing. Yeah, right. So i cross i is zero. I cross j, k hat. Yeah, whatever. Just want r cross v first of all. So it's gonna be like v uh, g t cube t squared, and then minus yeah that thing uh, v g upon two times t squared. So it's gonna be v g upon two times t squared. That's our r cos v thing, and that times m that should give us the angular uh, momentum. It's going to be m v g upon two t squared along k hat. That is our angular momentum. And what do we want? Uh, during a time of flight, of course. So initially, initially at time equal to zero, it's zero. And then finally it is, uh, what's the time of flight? Time of flight is going to be, how we do it? H is equal to half uh, g times t squared, right? So uh, t, Squared. Oh, we just have that over here. Half e squared. This will be h. So m v h. That's right. That's the thing. m v h. So 40 m v h. That's the angular momentum that it picked up. Of course, uh, it's perpendicular to the uh, plane in which this is moving. Both of them. Right. Okay. So this is it. 40 done. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.